everybody. Uh, it's good to be back with you as we wrap up our uh, Bible study on Max Licato's book, You're Never Alone. Uh, this last session is God is with you when you need grace. Um, I'm going to start off, If it's kind of a weird way to start off, but if you're a dog owner, you kind of know, uh, you've experienced your pet's shame. You know, you, you come home, been going to work all day, they've been inside, and, and they hunker down in the corner like, maybe they won't notice that I chewed up the furniture, or maybe they won't notice that, um, you know, I might have used the bathroom where I wasn't supposed to. Um, and we're not much different. Uh, as human beings, we're not much different. When we make mistakes, our instinct is pretty much to run and hide. And... Um, you know, we, we run from that apology. We run from someone texting us or calling us. Um, but our shame will never heal us. Um, if you let your shame take over your life, then then you can never really, really, truly be healed and have that relationship with Jesus Christ that you need to have. Uh, at some point, confession, repentance, um, and restoration are needed, you know, Fess up for what you've done. Um, hold yourself accountable, and and then we can truly have that relationship that we need to have, you know. And we find that even though the steps towards restoration, you know, are difficult, the restoration is is completely worth it because that that weight is lifted off your shoulders, and you no longer let shame rule your life. And Jesus understands us. I mean, He well understands our failings as human beings because. He was human. He was on this earth as a human being. Um, and although his disciples, you know, were with him while he was here on this earth, uh, they were not as perfect as he was. Jesus did not pick the perfect. He did not, he did not choose to walk beside the perfect beings. I mean... You know, you look through history, that's that's Jesus aligned himself with those that some of us wouldn't. And he, and that truly showed his love for all. And, you know, even Judas, you know, the ultimate betrayal, Jesus loved him. Jesus loved Judas. And he and Judas was a big part of what had to happen in order for the greatest miracle, which we've talked about miracles throughout this study, the greatest miracle in the resurrection. Um, and, and you know, Peter denied him three times. Jesus told him he would do so. And, you know, so the disciples had their failings too. And when it, when it came to the most staggering miracle, you know, his resurrection from the grave, uh, most of them doubted. Until they actually saw Jesus resurrected, they doubted it. And Jesus had been telling them this for a long, long time um, of what would happen. You know, one of them finally saw the empty tomb and believed. And But regardless of all that, Jesus still loved them. And, and that should tell us, you know, that, that Jesus loves us no matter what, but we can't let that shame rule our lives and, and stand between us and the relationship that we can have with God. You know, he and Jesus didn't add to their shame. He didn't come back and say, oh, you know, oh, now you want to see me because, you know, before you you denied me, but now you're okay with it. You know, he didn't do that. He, he displayed he displayed his love in incredible ways, and, and, and he chose to be present with them after the resurrection. Jesus could have just left this earth and, and been done with it and said, I can't do any more, but he didn't. He came back, and, and he was with his people. And, and Jesus was a safe place for them to confess, repent, and ultimately believe, and that's where we are today. That's what we have to do today. Right now, right in this moment, repent and confess and believe so that we can have that relationship with Jesus Christ that we need. And we all have similar failings, you know, like the disciples. Um, yet the promise of the gospel is that no matter how much we doubt God, 
how much we mess up or fail, Jesus is ready to forgive us and, and to be with us. He offers us the same gift that he offered to the disciples, and that's grace. And as this, I'm not going to have any PowerPoints or anything with this one um, because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You, you can't let shame hold you down. You can't let what's gone on in your life, whether it be in the past or what's happening right now, stand between you and God. And that's definitely not what Jesus wants. So I will read to you from John uh, 18, chapter 15 through 18, or verse 15 through 18 and verse 25 through 27. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because his disciple, this disciple was known to be known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter, and he replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire and they had made that they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. So they asked him, You aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? And again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. You know, Peter had denied even knowing Christ when confronted about his association with Jesus. But now, after the resurrection, Jesus was alive. And can you imagine Peter the shame that he felt, how was he going to face his master? Because deep inside, he he may have believed, but he didn't act on it. He didn't act on that belief. And that's what a lot of us do. We, we sit back and we say, okay, well, you know, I believe, but uh, do I really? And am I going to act on that? And am I going to walk, you know, in faith with Jesus Christ every day? Or am I just going to say that I believe and, and go on with it? Um, and it it's tough. It's tough to walk in faith. It's it's not an easy thing to do, and nobody has ever, no, no chapter or verse in the Bible will ever tell you that it's an easy life to walk with Christ. It's not. We're, we're tempted every day. We're... We feel shameful, you know, at things that we have done in our past that, that haunt us every day because we refuse to let it go. But Jesus tells us to let it go. Give it to God. And that's what we all need to do in order to have that relationship that we, that we need with Jesus Christ. And the, I'll ask a couple of questions. These are the last couple of questions in the book. How do you typically react when you feel shame over something you have done? And do you think this is a healthy or unhealthy response? So that's something to answer for yourself. When is a time that you, when is a time that you chose to extend grace to another person who had wronged you? What happened as a result of your gift? And that's a key that's a key thing right there is if you you know, if you've been wronged by someone, do you carry that grudge the rest of your life? Or, or do you say, you know what, it's, it's better just to forgive and, and move on? Because a lot of times we hold that grudge for something someone has done to us, and it holds us back. It holds you and I back just by thinking about it all the time. But if we let it go, give it to God, forgive, and move on, then maybe that person has to deal with it, but you no longer have to. And those things are what keeps us from having the relationship with God that we need to have. So this one was uh, this one was pretty short today, and and you know last weekend we celebrated the resurrection of Christ, and and at Franklin Baptist Church we had a just an absolutely wonderful. 
service, uh, one of the better ones that I can remember. And the Holy Spirit was in that place. But I can't help but feel like there's just somebody out there in, in the congregation that is feeling this, that's feeling shame and and needing to really take that step and that, that extra step in their faith and allowing God to be more part of their life. And I hope if, if somebody that's watching this, that was you, let him give you the strength and courage um, to take that extra step. It's worth it. And I'll end with, uh, I was watching um, Brother Tim Lovett's um, sermon, Easter sermon, and he he explained it so much better than I'm about to, but pretty much that, you know, when Jesus Christ was on that cross, he was, he was the Trinity. He was, the, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He was God. That was God hanging on that cross. Um, it was no longer who we know as Jesus Christ. It was God. And God knows how we feel. God knows what we feel. So, you know, when Jesus was, was being beaten and, and hanging there on a cross, he, he knew all of the pain and torment that, some, that one person could possibly handle. He knew it. And he still did it. He could have said, God, just take me down. God, just take me away. Take this pain away. But, he, you know, it's, he died on a cross for our sins. He doesn't want us to feel the shame every day. He doesn't want us to carry that load by ourselves. He's there to help us. It just takes us reaching out to him. Give your heart to Jesus. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And that's just the plain and simple truth. And when we are in Christ, as this book says, you are never alone. And you aren't going to ever be alone. So thank you all for, you know, tuning in and, and doing this study with me. Um, sorry that it took an extra week to do it, but um, I think it's worth it. It's, the book is worth a good read. Um, it's, a, it's a quick read. It doesn't, it doesn't take you forever to do it. And I, I highly, you know, urge you to get the book and, and check it out. So if you ever need anything, I'm here. And I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. And remember that we serve a risen Savior. So everybody be safe and God bless.